Hello friends, we are going to discuss another very important topic in ophthalmology that is idocyclitis or anterior uveitis. The uveitis means the inflammation of the uveal tract. The uveal tract is the middle vascular layer of the eye which includes iris ciliary body and choroid because it is vascular it is at risk for the inflammation due to infection or inflammation anywhere in the body there are various classifications for uveitis it has been classified into anterior uveitis, intermediate and posterior uveitis and pan uveitis. The reason why it has been divided into different types based on the anatomical positions is the presentation is quite different with each of those. For example, anterior uveitis presents with pain intolerance to the light and decreased vision in contrast to this posterior uveitis presents with decreased vision and floaters that is patient complains of seeing some spider like structures in the front of the eye and the eye is totally white and it is painless in case of posterior uveitis the anterior uveitis includes iritis and idocyclitis which are the anterior part of the uvea the interior mediate uveitis includes inflammation of the ciliary body and extreme periphery of the retina pars plana is the part of the ciliary body and when it gets involved it is called as pasplanitis. Posterior uveitis includes retinitis and choroiditis whereas pan uveitis includes inflammation of the entire uveal tract. It can also be classified into acute uveitis where the inflammation lasts for six weeks or less and in case of chronic uveitis it persists for months or years. The very interesting feature of uveitis is it has a ten tendency for frequent flare-ups that is recurrences that is recurrent uveitis. Pathologically you can classify it into granulomatous and non-granulomatous uveitis. The granulomatous uveitis is characterized by nodules in the iris in case of anterior granulomatous uveitis. The keratic precipitates found in case of granulomatous uveitis they are called as mutton fat KPs or keratic precipitates. We will understand why they are called as keratic precipitates subsequently. A couple of important reasons for granulomatous uveitis include sarcoidosis and tuberculosis. Most of the times the uveitis is idiopathic where there is no particular cause for the uveitis. Various infections like tuberculosis, candida, herpetic infection, toxoplasmosis can all cause uveitis. So whether it is a bacteria, virus, fungus or protozoa, anything can cause uveitis. Systemic associations of uveitis is a very important topic from the exam point of view. HLA B27 associated uveitis 
is seen in patients who have got ankylosing spondylitis, Reiter syndrome, psoriasis, ulcerative colitis. Other important associations with uveitis include sarcoidosis, Bassett's disease and rheumatoid arthritis. Some important systemic associations of uveitis that can be asked in exams are Reiter syndrome which includes urethritis, conjunctivitis and arthritis. Sarcoidosis is an important exam topic. They may give you features of uveitis in addition to a chest x-ray finding saying there are some nodules on chest x-ray and serum angiotensin converting enzyme levels being elevated. Ankylosing spondylitis, the typical history will be of chronic backache, HLA B27 positivity. They may as well have features of anterior uveitis. Bessette's disease, characterized by recurrent oral ulcers, genital ulcers, eye lesions, and skin lesions. It is positive for HLA B5. The presentation of anterior uveitis can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. It can be acute or it can be chronic. Acute aridocyclitis is characterized by pain, redness, blurred vision and very characteristic is intolerance to the light or photophobia. In contrast to this, patients with chronic aridocyclitis may be very minimally symptomatic the eye may be totally white and quiet whereas when you examine them you may see some severe signs of inflammation. So what are the signs of aridocyclitis that is anterior uveitis? The vision can be blurred. It sometimes can be normal in the initial presentation. Ciliary congestion is seen. There can be corneal edema. There are some leukocytes deposits on the posterior surface of the cornea. They are called as keratic precipitates. That is very typical of hydrocyclitis. Because of the breakdown of the blood aqueous barrier, there is inflammation in the anterior chamber which are seen as cells and flare. Sometimes in very severe idocyclitis you may also see some hypopion. Because of the inflammation in the anterior chamber there is some amount of fibrin as well in the anterior chamber which causes formation of synechia. Synechia are nothing but adhesions. They are called as anterior synechia if the adhesions are between the anterior surface of the iris and the posterior surface of the cornea. Whereas the posterior synechia are the adhesions between the posterior surface of the iris and the anterior surface of the lens. These synechia can lead to formation of glaucoma by interfering with the drainage of the aqueous or it can lead to formation of a cataract by impairing the lens metabolism. The pupil is small, irregular. If you dilate the pupil with some dilating drops you can see that the part of the iris 
which is adherent to the lens will not dilate and this gives an appearance of a festooned pupil. Cataract is one of the complications that can be seen in patients with idocyclitis. This is a picture of idocyclitis. You can see here some white deposits. These deposits are on the posterior surface of the cornea. These are called as keratic precipitates. An interesting thing that you can see in these keratic precipitates or KPs is these are located in the lower part of the cornea. It's called as Arlt's triangle. The reason why they are located in the lower part in a triangular fashion is because of the effect of the gravity they prefer to settle down and the posterior surface of the cornea is uh, preferred place because it is relatively cooler compared to the interior surface of the iris. If you can see here the iris, the pupil is stuck to the lens and you can see this irregular dilatation of the pupil and these adhesions are called as synechia. You can see almost 360 degree synechia in this picture. Most of the times when you investigate for idocyclitis, they are normal because most of the time it is idiopathic. However, you would like to investigate an idocyclitis patient if there is a granulomatous anterior uveitis or there is a bilateral anterior uveitis. The various tests that you would like to do in a patient with idocyclitis are ESR and CRP which are a marker for inflammation. You would also like to get a full blood count, blood glucose. Chest x-ray may help you to look for a systemic cause for idocyclitis or uveitis like tuberculosis or sarcoidosis, serum ACE levels for sarcoidosis, quantiferan gold is the gold standard for tuberculosis, syphilis serology for syphilis, rheumatoid factor for rheumatoid arthritis can also help to make an etiological diagnosis. Various complications include cataract, glaucoma, band keratopathy. Because of the chronic inflammation, the ciliary body may not produce the aqueous, leading to a small, shrunken, non functioning eye, which is called as thysis bulbi. Ultimately, these all can lead to blindness. How do you manage patients with acute idocyclitis? Topical steroids is the mainstay of the treatment, which may be in the form of prednisolone drops or dexamethasone drops. Cycloplegic drugs like cyclopentolate or atropine are very important to relieve the ciliary spasm and to prevent formation of synechia. If the intraocular pressure is elevated then IOP lowering drops should be used. Identifying and treating the underlying cause as well is important part of the management. So what is important in idocyclitis is the management should be started immediately with starting the steroid drops and cycloplegics without waiting for the results of investigations. As I said, most of the time it is idiopathic and uh, the blood test would probably be normal. And early detection and prompt treatment prevents visual loss and complications seen in anterior 
uveitis. Thank you for watching this video. Please do give back your feedbacks on the presentation as it would help us to improve on our presentation. Thank you.